People believe that I'm a money bag, but it's not kind of the case. And the fact that I can be here today to talk about Elamir Hankish is uh, the proof of the chaos uh, theory because I have not been involved in any disciplines. We have not had any scientific work. This is not science that we uh, that relate to us uh, to each other. It's his daughter actually that has. Uh, this is the link. There is a game called Risico, and we were wondering uh, whether it would be possible to, to, to change the rules that not only ground forces and troops, uh, the ships were overruled later, and we were sitting in an attic room, we also wanted to, we had a discussion what color we should use for decoration and how to uh, reach the uh, rafts on top of the room, so these were some very interesting questions. But now, I would like to talk about a period of time when Emil Honkish was the head of the national TV company and this is related to what I do currently. Now, why is it interesting? Uh, uh, I gained the title Standing in the Middle when I decided to talk about Elamir, and he became an agent in a very long-standing political game uh, without his willingness to join in this game, in fact. In, although he had the best intention and he had the best uh, ideas, he actually got, he, he, he found himself in the middle of a swamp, in the middle of a bog, out of which he couldn't really come out. Uh, there are all kinds of stories that I could talk about how I met him and how we wrote uh, um, um, a story about cartoons, and then this is how he ended up being a consultant for cartoon, a cartoon studio, actually. And he gave us a lot of ideas based on which new programs were launched. He was a member of the opposition roundtable, and as a result of which, in 1990, he was asked, requested to be, to be or to accept the position of the head of the TV company. Company. He actually wanted to uh, accept this being a TV uh, manager. And József Antal, the then Prime Minister of Hungary, said that we shouldn't only talk about and write about things, because this is what probably uh, he thought Elamir was doing. Uh, this is the time for you to take action. So Elamir said, OK, I will accept this position, and I will take action, not just talk about things. Elamir's wife, Lily, who is unfortunately not here, said that you must be out of your mind, you go to this um, um, uh, ant house and colony of ants. I mean, quite, it was quite obvious that information which uh, was coming from all sorts of sources, it was impossible to handle it. Uh, and Elamir was trying to stand in the middle of all this. Well, Realm of Elemir information or a wealth of information. Elamir, a few years later, said that I never joined any of the parties. Well, both parties or every party hated me because they all believed that I belonged to another party. But standing in the middle is very funny. I think it's important, but it costs me a lot. In July 1990, he, uh, the parliament uh, voted for him to be elected as head of the TV company, and the president signed his nomination. But we know that there was a secret pact between uh, these, the two major parties, but they forgot to inform the media. So that was a brilliant situation that at the time, the rules invented at the time of the uh, communism, uh, sort of directed the whole 
public situation after the change of regime, the transition into democracy. So the TV had did not have a scope to act, and any, anything he couldn't have prevented anything with the relevant legal and uh, legal power, legislative power he had. So there was such strong regulation, party regulation, still valid over his head. If you now understand, um, this is what happened. Uh, they all interpreted the legal framework differently. And Hankish was our person sent the, the state. Where, where is the problem? Yeah? So the government and the opposition soon realized that Alamir wanted to achieve two things seriously. He wanted to have an independent information to the public, uh, independent of any parties, and then the television should be free and independent of the government. These two points didn't meet the expectations of any of the agents and participants. Obviously, the government wanted to broadcast as many government uh, programs uh, as possible, but then Poor Elamir wanted to uh, be balanced. Nobody was happy about this. Everybody wanted more. And then nobody thought that Elamir was their person, their agent. You know, the Casus Belli in uh, the, the autumn of 1990. And we are talking about three months, three months elapsing. This honeymoon period was over. And before the second round of the elections, Josef Antal wanted to read out the speech on the Hungarian TV channel. And then he said, uh, Elamir said, OK, you can read it, but then the president of the republic should have a speech as well. So if you make a speech, Arpad Gönt should make a speech too. Uh, probably he didn't realize that this political correctness does not equal to the one around him, and this is why Arpad Jones, just a few hours before the speech was recorded, cancelled his speech, but the answer speech was recorded, so Hankish was left with the decision whether he should uh, allow the speech to be broadcast or not. He wanted to telephone the Prime Minister uh, Antal, and uh, he actually did phone him and said that Guns was uh, actually ca he, he cancelled his presentation, so I think you should, Mr. Prime Minister, as well. And uh, he said that he, there would be trouble. It has a political message conveyed, which is difficult to understand. Well, this decision retrospectively was found guilty by Elmer himself. Um, he realized that he should have been more flexible. And even at the BBC, where there is a very precarious uh, political uh, balancing and equilibrium trying to be achieved, he, I was probably too rigid and too unflexible in interpreting my task. So actually, he didn't allow the Antal speech to be broadcast and that proved to be a fatal decision. The opposition used him as a martyr, but for the government he was the devil. And there were some extraordinarily silly uh, statements that Hankish uh, might be the, the murderer of uh, prime, the Prime Minister. Hankish uh, stood out for his principle and he kept his struggle for a long time. Many believed that it was a very positive thing, but many believed it was quite idiotic. He should have finished the whole thing. He should have backed out of this position because politicians can do whatever they want to. Uh, Honkish and Gombard both renounced their uh, position from uh, being head. Uh, Gombard was the head of the radio and Honkish of the TV. Gombard only wrote two lines and Honkish sent an explanation of two pages. A few years later, he told me it was a bad decision or maybe a good one, I don't know. 
There was a kind of treachery because I, uh, I didn't send out uh, uh, for my uh, colleagues because they were, we were in the same fight against uh, the power and to be independent. But I don't want to get hold of the position which I had no interest in. So I'm not in the position to say whether Elamir was in the right to denounce this position or not. But it was quite obvious that it was impossible to keep on doing. And Father Jelenic, uh, who appeared at a, a, a book uh, presentation, he said that Elamir was right, but I don't think he's a kind of person who would have no objective, who would have no future. And as a TV president, he had his own principles, he had his own ethics, and the only question is whether you can remain ethical uh, in the realm of political games. I think it's not about ethics, but naivety.